Hi, I'm Sally Briggs and I am really excited that you are here and that you made it to this blog or this YouTube as I feel like that God has given me a really great message um, that I'd like to share with you. It has to do with murmuring and grumbling, which I believe right now it just seems like that is all over the place. We hear it on the news, we hear it with our friends, we almost often times don't even want to ask, how are you? Because you don't want to really hear. And I get it, and God gets it. But does it make God happy? Um, so I'm gonna start with prayer and then we will uh, listen to this message that I have to say that I feel like God gave me. Dear Father, I thank you so much for the message that you've dropped into my heart this last week. And it was a struggle, and I believe we all are going through different struggles. <sighs> it could be just about what is going on in our country, in our world, in our town, or in our own families, in our personal lives. Lord God, but whatever it is, there are ways to overcome. And I thank you that you are our strength in the time of any trouble, any trial. You are our strength, and I thank you for that. I thank you for this message that you would bless each person who hears it right now, Lord God, each person right where they are, that they're meant to be here. And I thank you for the message in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Amen. So um, the message I have to tell you about has to do with murmuring and grumbling and what God has recently showed me this last week in my own life. Um, we, I know some of you have heard, if you've been paying attention to my blog, my YouTube, uh, our house last July flooded. A pipe broke in our upstairs, one of our upstairs um, bathrooms. Um, it ran for three days because we were on vacation and it damaged so much of the interior of the home that it's been 10 months. They've been reconstructing it and we still aren't back home yet. Is that a reason to grumble? Um, well, yep, I kind of felt so. So I've been, it's kind of been building. It's been building over the last few months, really, as the process has gotten much longer than we expected. But just recently, it got to where it's just becoming very uh, intense, I feel like. And so my husband and I have been, we are talking about it a lot because it's at the end uh, completion and there's little things or big things that need to be completed or fixed or something needs to be done and I found myself murmuring grumbling a lot a lot a lot mostly to my husband but if someone else wanted to ask me about the house I would grumble to them also but I realized then my grumbling and I realized it through God really speaking in my heart just a few days ago he showed me that my grumbling over the house had overflowed into grumbling about people that I had encounters with. Even if I wasn't grumbling out loud, I was grumbling inside. Like, why is that person acting that way? And wow, that was kind of dumb what that person did. And wow, look at what she looks like or what she's wearing. I mean, I was just starting to become this personal grumbler about a lot of things all day long. Then the other day, just a couple days ago, is when the Holy Spirit really just kind of, I felt like slammed me against the wall in a very gentle, kind way and said, straighten up, Sally, straighten up and listen to what I'm going to remind you of right now. And Right before that happened, this is what had happened. We are living in a rental home. It's a beautiful rental home. It truly has been a blessing as it's only a block away from our real home and it was completely furnished, never before lived in. Amazing that we got it and it was totally a God thing. So we're living in this rental, but there's something about the toilet that really bothers me and I don't have to go into details, but it really just bugs me. And so the other day, I flushed the toilet, turned around, and said, I hate this toilet. And right then is when the Holy Spirit did his deal on me. He just spoke into my heart and he said, do you know what happened to the Israelites when they were led by Moses through the desert for 40 years, which was supposed to take only 11 day journey? He said, they grumbled. 
they murmured. They complained. They complained. Only two of the original um, Israelites who left Egypt, only two made it to the promised land. That was Joshua and Caleb. All the rest were second or third generation. All the rest died on the desert. Never, ever, never reached the promised land. Well, whew, when he spoke that into my heart, because that's what the Holy Spirit does, he brings back things to your remembrance at the exact time when you need to hear them. God is always trying to speak to you, so just pay attention. But he reminded me of that. He said, they never made it. And I started thinking, wow, do I never want to make it into my house? Am I just going to grumble it into non-existence? I mean, that's kind of what the impression that I got. And I started thinking about other things in my life that I've grumbled about for a long, long time. And oftentimes when I finally realize that my grumbling is getting me nowhere and it's making the situation last longer and longer and longer, I would turn myself around and change my attitude. And I realized this was time to change my attitude. Because what happens is when you are grumbling, when you're murmuring against whatever it is, as you do it more and more and more, well, what happens is you, in Proverbs 18, verse 21, it tells us the power of life and death is in your tongue. What you speak out of will come back to you. You will eat of you will eat your words. So if I'm murmuring a whole bunch, I am eating my murmurs and my grumbles. And then from there, what happens is another scripture, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Well, when my abundance is being filled with grumbling, because also I reap what I sow, I'm sowing grumbling into the world, then I'm gonna reap the grumbling back. The abundance in my heart begins to overflow. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when I've got so much grumbling inside of me, then I just continue to speak it out. And it becomes a vicious circle. And you have to catch yourself. So often we get into habits like this. So important to catch yourself. Start acknowledging if you're stuck in a negative, no good, rotten, awful place. If you're being critical all the time, or if you're suddenly gossiping all the time, or maybe you're telling little white lies that seem insignificant, but you're doing it like pretty frequently, or you're just murmuring or grumbling. Well, it just really came into my heart that that's exactly what I had been doing. And that when the Holy Spirit also spoke into my heart, he also told me that hate is absolutely a word that should not be coming out of my mouth. Wow, I had never even thought about that. When I said, I hate this toilet, he caused me to acknowledge that I had been saying I hate other things. I'm very careful not to say I hate people. In 1 John, I believe it's 3, or 1 John 13, sorry, um, he tells us that to hate a brother, to hate a sister, to say I hate someone is as, as bad as being a murderer. That's huge. That's huge. And this is a New Testament that this says that. If you say that you hate someone, it's as bad as if you were a murderer. Wow. So I think that hate is not a word that should come out of our mouths, whether we're talking about a person or we're talking about anything in life. We should never go to the place of hate. God has created this world. He's given us so much to be thankful for. We are told in God's word to be thankful in all things. Godliness with contentment is great reward. Rejoice in the Lord always. We are not to be hating people and we're not to be grumbling. So I really took this to heart. I was so grateful that the, that the Holy Spirit had convicted me and showed me the place that I was getting into and that I was turning it into a vicious circle. And that vicious circle is just like the Israelites going around and around the mountain. They never got to the promised land. 
When you get yourself in a, into a vicious circle, you're going to keep going around and around and around. God can't even get into that circle because you have just made that permanent circle in your own life something that you have chosen to do. You're not choosing Christ to break into that. You're not choosing to have self-control and remove yourself from that habit until you recognize and realize it's not going to get me to the place of peace. That's where we want to get to. The place of peace is the place of power. The place of peace is what we long for really more than anything else in our lives. If you have peace, you don't have fear, you don't have anxieties, you don't have worries. You are in a state of peace and rest in God, which is what God wants for us. When we're in peace, we can make it through any trial because we have put our complete trust in our wonderful Lord and Savior. So I hope this message has helped you. I hope you're thinking about where your circle is that you might be stuck in and you are capable of removing yourself. I have removed myself and today was the first day that I have completely made that choice and my life felt so blessed today. I mean truly it was like I was overflowing out of the, out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks and all I could say today as I was just doing my daily everything, was how grateful I am for God. Thank you, God, for blessing me. He wants to bless you in the same way. He wants you to have peace and rest in the midst of your storms. Dear Father, I thank you for this message. I thank you for whoever is here right now. I pray, God, that you just speak so clearly into their own hearts in the areas where they may be stuck in their own circles, Heavenly Father. And God, that you give them the strength as they call out to you to get out of that circle and to choose your godliness, your contentment, your